So, we messed up. I'm sure as you can already tell by the title of the episode, that there is no guest this week, and with that, is going to be me opening up to you guys about something that's a little bit personal, but hopefully, hopefully, not even hopefully, I know that this is information that's going to help you guys whenever dealing with mistakes. With that being said, let's jump into the podcast. Traveling to consciousness, exploring spiritual journeys to find answers in uncertainty. What is up, Conscious Monkeys? Welcome to another episode of Traveling to Consciousness. As always, I am your host, Clay and Kateri, and today... As I already prefaced, I am going to be sharing something a little bit personal with you all. As I'm sure you know, I know you know, I usually have a guest for one of my episodes each week, which would be today, uh, this week, but unfortunately this week I don't have one. And I could give you a laundry list of reasons why, but at the end of the day, those are all excuses. The fact of the matter is, is I just don't have one. And so... This led me to experiencing some feelings. So stepping past my excuses, this invokes some feelings in me and the feelings of almost letting you guys down, which I found super fascinating that I had this feeling that I'm better than this. This couldn't happen to me. I was planning to bring a new podcast every single week to you guys. I should have done better. And as I'm sure some of you were probably looking forward to hearing from a well-known guest, or maybe you're just curious to learn something new from a different perspective, and now it's just me. But that's what brings us back to why do I feel like I let you guys down? I mean, this podcast is an absolute blessing. And quite frankly, with all due respect to you guys, I started this podcast with the intention or the effort or the purpose of connecting and talking to just anybody who I wanted to talk to on the face of the earth. And we're getting close to there, which is kind of wild, but putting all of that aside, why am I feeling like I let you guys down? I thought maybe it's because, you know, I have promised you and maybe even promised myself to always have a guest once a week. That could be a reason. I I, I think that Maybe it's possible that without a guest, maybe my episode won't be good enough. Maybe the just hearing me, some of you may only be coming for the guest episode and now you're going to lose traction. I, I mean, maybe it's because I'm afraid that if I don't have a guest, people will stop coming to my podcast. Not all of these fully resonate with myself, but I'm just kind of proposing them as potential ideas. And hopefully you can see a little bit of a parallel parallel in your life because Whatever the reason may be, I realized that it's okay to make a mistake. It doesn't matter the reason that the mistake was made. It just matters that it's okay to make a mistake, which even got me thinking even deeper as to why am I not okay with making a mistake? Are there benefits to making mistakes? So in this episode, in this longer episode, I'm going to dive into what spirituality and science has to say about making mistakes. And in fact, let's start off with what some of the science has to say. Of course, it's not possible and it's not really even in the scope of this podcast to go over all the scientific literature. I really want to just kind of touch in the science and touch in the religious or spiritual realms of things to bring them together. So one of the studies that I found, which stood out to me, was a paper that was published in 2017 by psychologist Janet Metcalf, and it's called Learning from Errors. As always, the links will be down in the description below, so please go ahead, click that, check it out. And Janet Metcalf, throughout her paper, she actually shows how in the American school system and classrooms, and I know majority of my listeners are Americans, so this is going to hit home with you, but in the majority of American classrooms that 
avoiding and even ignoring mistakes at school is kind of the rule of the land. Okay, cool. You got a 70 out of 100. That's enough to pass. So let's move on. There's not really a fixation or a a credence and a, a, an attention, a acknowledgement of the mistake that was being made. And she even goes further to say that it could in fact be holding our education system back. And even in some of the other literature I saw, and even as we get deeper in this podcast, you might agree as well, because drawing on that research, she also argued that students would benefit from these mistakes by correcting them, by going back and seeing why or how they made me these mistakes. And as opposed to just avoiding them saying, okay, cool. I got, I missed 30% of the questions. Okay. I missed even just 10%, right? You missed 10% of the questions. You still get an A, you still get all the marks that quote unquote matter, but yet you still miss 10% of the material. So you should at least go back and correct them or see what their answer is or understand why your brain missed those things. And at the end of all of this, she kind of found that the act of making mistakes actually helps our brains form stronger memory of the actual correct information. So if you were to go back and correct those things, you would actually be more likely to have a stronger memory of the things that you missed the first time because you go back and then see how it kind of connects in the bigger picture. And I thought this was fascinating. I, I thought this was kind of genius and I skimmed a couple other studies. I didn't really dive deep because I also wasn't really planning on having this podcast. So stick with me here again. That's not a valid excuse, but it's just what it is. And so this also got me wondering is like, what does spirituality or any sort of religion kind of believe or talk about in terms of making mistakes? And the first one that popped out at me was a famous Zen proverb. So kind of like Buddhist uh, that emphasizes the importance of resilience and persistence and moving forward whenever we're facing challenges, which is very simple and eloquent. Fall seven times, stand up eight. And I'm sure we've all heard some rendition of that. It's not about how many times you get pushed down. It's about how many times you get up. And it feels like that's kind of thing. You, you got to learn from getting pushed down. You got to learn from that mistake. And even more so in Buddhism, there's a concept called the beginner's mind. And I think there's a book actually called the beginner's mind, but I haven't read it myself. So I'm going to leave it at that. But in Buddhism, the beginner's mind, which encourages us to kind of like approach new experiences with a sense of curiosity or openness to what these new experiences have in store for us, rather than taking in our judgment or our preconceived notions or our ingrained belief system on what we're about to get into. And I, I think that can span so many different things. So I'm not even going to try to narrow that down. You could even say going to the gym, right? Something you do every single day, toss out the preconceived notion or the notion or judgment that you have of even brushing your teeth. And so even furthermore, it kind of, hmm, I see how that kind of ties into it, right? So I'm, I was going on a tangent there. For some reason, that felt really aligned with what we were saying. It makes me think that there's this sense of appreciation for what we're doing. Because if you're going into it with it, okay, here it is. If you're going into it with a new mindset, than you did the first time, you could brush your teeth the same way your entire life and never know that there was even a better way. I don't know how you brush your teeth, but maybe there's a different way that's even better. And had you kept that preconceived notion, you wouldn't have made the improvement. You wouldn't have learned from a mistake in which even learning that about such a basic thing, whether it's reading every day, whether it's how you get into bed, how you make your bed, if you go into it with that new mindset every single step of the way, you're going to learn a new and better way to do it. And realize you were making a mistake in the first place, which you may not have known before. And so let's move along in the spiritual scriptures. Okay, let's move along. Islam. Let's move along to Islam. 
the Muslim faith. And and before I actually read this, I do want to make a little caveat that if there are any Islamic uh, listeners of the podcast, I know that there's a little bit of a debate between whether you can actually translate the Quran, because some people will sit there and say that, you know, you can't translate it out of Arabic. And I'll do respect to that. Like, I completely get what they mean when they say that, because it's losing its complete and full meaning of the words that are prescribed to it. So I do want to put that out there. as like a total respect for them kind of deal. But there's an interesting quote in there from Surah, Surah 94, 5, 6, where it says, Verily, with every difficulty, there is release. And so this kind of passage, I mean, points to the fact that even in difficult times, there's better days ahead. So by pushing through those difficulties, pushing through those days of introspection, on the other side of that, the sun's going to be brighter than it was before. Which, again, bringing this back to the podcast, it means that me feeling this turmoil, feeling this sense of letting you guys down, I can see it as a blessing. Because it means something on the other side is going to spark a little bit of divinity, a little bit of that extra edge, if you will. And I think it's just kind of beautiful. And and even following this up, right, we got, we got two more religions to talk about here. Um, going to kind of Hinduism, uh, in, their, in their text, the Bhagavad Gita, one of their texts, I know they have a whole bunch of different scriptures. Uh, Lord Krishna, who is their version of Jesus Christ, tells Arjuna, quote, be steadfast in yoga, O Arjuna. And if you don't know, like we're not talking about Western yoga. We're talking about the union with God himself. That's kind of what yoga actually means. And maybe that's actually worth a whole episode on its own talking about yoga. But let me get back to the quote. So be steadfast in yoga or your communion with God, O Arjuna. Perform your duty and abandon all attachment to success or failure. Such evenness in mind is called yoga. And what this reminds me of, this is something I've actually been thinking about a lot, right? Is even stepping out of the dualistic nature of a mistake or even success. Where, think about the yin and the yang, the yin yang symbol, right? You have the dark and you have the white. You could argue that the mistakes in the dark and the correct answer is the white. But at the end of the day, you want to become the embodiment of the symbol. So no matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter what happens, it's not good or bad. And I'm realizing that that could actually come across the wrong way if interpreted from a dualistic mindset, which makes it kind of ironic to even talk about it in the first place. Let me think about that for a second. Yeah, that's going to be a difficult one to... Uh, describe i'll have to think about that a little bit more kind of the ideas is like i i guess if we look at it in the test example right you mess up on a test and you go back and you quote unquote fix it right you're learning it's almost like a good thing you made that mistake right because as we were talking about earlier if you actually go back and learn from that mistake there's more power in that so it's interesting. So it's like, was it actually a mistake in the first place? Because you could argue that now you learn that even more. You know that piece of information even deeper in your system, in your body, in your mind. So was it really a good or bad thing that you've mistaked it in the first place? So it's, it's interesting, right? And this kind of even ties into the idea of like not attaching yourself to outcome. You know, don't worry about if you're quote unquote successful or quote unquote failure. Just focus on doing what you need to do. Focus on being the best at what you can do. And everything else will fix itself for you. And then even in the Bible, there's a verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, that says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And to me... This reminds us that we don't have to worry about the future. We just need to trust in the Lord's source energy that 
if we do our best, everything will work out. Everything will work out if we just do our best. And this kind of ties back into that yin and yang, right? If you just are doing your best, you're trying to expand the circle, you're trying to be the most aligned person you can be, like that's the place to live. That's the place to move forward. So all of this to say, it's okay if you mess up one week, one day, one month, just get back on the horse, keep trying, keep moving. And even more so, look forward to when you think you, quote, make a mistake. Make it a good thing because it clearly is based on the scientific studies that we've seen here where they can actually help us to learn, to grow. And even from a spiritual perspective, we can view our mistakes as <sighs> opportunities for growth and even just to trust that everything's going to work out in the end. I mean, look at my life story. I quit my job without a plan and I'm still alive two years later. But that's a whole another story for another time. And even another quote that's coming to mind is fail fast. I know a lot of people um, in the entrepreneurial space say that a lot. Fail fast. And it makes total sense. Keep going. Make mistakes. Quit. Because you did your best. Now you failed. Okay, do your best again. Do your best again. Is that just constant reiteration? So with all of that being said, instead of feeling like that I let you guys down or that I you know, wasn't living up to my end of the bargain, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to reflect on how far we've actually come. We've had over, over, oh my gosh, we've had over 75 episodes, some of the most amazing guests in the entire world. And it's absolutely insane how much that I know I've learned from each and every one of them. So shout out to you guys if you're a guest listening to this. And I know you guys have learned a ton from them too. And even though this week is just me talking about my week in review, I hope that you can still take something away from it. I know that there was a deeper lesson in here for more than just myself. And I think that that lesson has to tie into maybe it's just a reminder that it's okay to make mistakes and we can learn from them. Maybe it's a reminder to have faith in a higher power and trust everything will work out. Maybe it's a reminder to catch up and see what's going on in my life. Well, whatever it is, I just want to thank you guys as always for tuning in. And if you learned anything at all, I would love it, be honored, if you could do any of the zero cost, absolutely free ways to support this channel, which includes like leaving a review, sharing this with somebody who is going through a tough time with mistakes, and even subscribing. I mean, any and all of those are amazing. It helps out the podcast tremendously. It helps me out tremendously. It gets this into more people. It lets me know that I'm on the right track. And even your friends you share it with, they'll think you're super cool too because you listen to a dope podcast. <laughs> so guys, as always, that's it for today. Go check out the link below for the learning from our errors uh, study. As always, I will be back next week. We got a lot of dope podcasts coming up in the next month. It'll be incredible. But until then, Take care, keep learning, keep making mistakes, and I will see you all in the sixth dimension.